This is also why you buy a TF2, is for this axle platform and drivetrain. Hello folks, welcome to NetCruiser RC. It's been a while since we did a new RC video. Let's get into it. But a new crawler that I picked up, I think it's important to try out new things. There was a couple things I wanted to try out on a platform that I've heard plenty of good things about. The TF2. We got an RC four-wheel drive TF2 Marlin Crawler Edition. This one is a, I would almost dare say, special edition. It came out around 2018, and it's a modified version of the TF2 that has a little bit more performance than you get under the normal TF2. This is a hard body leaf spring crawler. All of those things I've never had before. This is a ready to run product. Depending on where you look, it's either 500 US to 700 US. Then in Canadian, it's anywhere from 675 Canadian to 900 Canadian, depending on what shop is selling it for. So I don't know what the pricing are like. I would think that one of them is MSRP, the other one is minimum advertised price. All right, if you're unfamiliar with the TF2, this one being the Marlin edition, which gets you a couple of unique things, the wheels and tire package, the body looks, a single speed transmission. A lot of the TF2s come with two speed transmissions, but here's all of the things that are different about the Marlin. Now, not all of these are unique things to the Marlin. The Interco scale tires, the super soft leaf springs, the, uh, these two I think are traditional. It's this one, the uh, R3 single speed transmission. Uh, the, the chassis is the same, but I think it's had some um, tweaks so that the undercarriage of it, more performance. So this is what the product is modeled after. It's this guy's real full-size truck, Mr. Marlin from Marlin Crawlers. And he has a, a full-size Toyota pickup truck that has these specs, but it's just modeled after it. Now when you get it out of the box, the truck just sits inside of all of the styrofoam, but a couple things I just wanted to go over first. Uh, the books and manuals and some of the extra stuff you get. The radio that comes with it. That you do get, um, it's a full ready to run, so you do get double A's with it. They're even RC four wheel drive double A's. Then, um, something that you end up having to pay for that I wish you didn't. A nickel metal hydride battery with a Tamiya connector. Come on guys, this is a you know, an expensive RC. First of all, I don't want a nickel metal hydride, and second of all, I definitely don't want me to my connectors on it, and then a AC charger. So I gave you some entry level things that most hobbyists would not want. I appreciate getting double double A's in the package. I always like that. I'm always looking for them, so that's good. And then let's just go over the transmitter. Now it looks interesting. It looks complicated for RTR. This seems almost racer-like, but it's not because the quality just isn't there. It's got some nice styling on the wheel. It does say RC four-wheel drive at the bottom. It's a 2.4 gigahertz. I believe it's a three channel. Gives you all the endpoints and adjustments, but just overall for the size of it, how weirdly it's shaped, how the inputs feel for, for the trigger and for the wheel, it's okay. The first time I go on the trails, I'm going to use this, and then I will probably switch it out to another radio, like a radio link or another kind of crawler specific radio that I can have multi-models on and then sell this off or get rid of this because I just don't really like the form factor of this thing. The books and manuals and stuff that you get, since this is RTR, I expected that I would have gotten some nice instructions and at first impression, you pull out this book and you're thinking, oh yeah, that's nice. It's like a magazine. It's nice, thick stock. It's, it's color printed. It looks like a nice manual. It has almost no good information in it. I'm, I'm really disappointed at the documentation. Uh, you get no information about setting up the chassis. You get no information about doing simple things like installing battery straps or how the leaf springs work or how to service the shocks, how to service the chassis, how to service the transmission. None of it is in here. The only thing that's in here is how to plug in the motor to the ESC to the battery. Basic stuff that you would know and it's already done for you because it's an RTR. So it's a real miss. I don't like this book. It's mostly health and safety. You also get no tools with this. So all that to say, this is not an ideal first RC for someone because you don't get all the things that you would need. Even though they're trying, they gave you a battery. And then some of this extra stuff, this they give no explanation for. 
I mean, it's a hobby. You're supposed to put time and effort in and figure out what you're doing, and I certainly will. But you get this, which I'm assuming is if you want to try and take the bed off, then you could turn it into just a cab only. But again, there's no instructions for how to do that. And uh, you get some extra clips and pins and things. And then you get a, a sheet for the uh, putting on the mirror reflectors. And then you get the decal sheet. All right, here's my very first RC four wheel drive, first hard body leaf spring truck. The Marlin only comes in this red color. It's not painted, it's molded. So first impressions, and I'm, for my first impression is that it doesn't quite have the quality look that I was kind of hoping for. To me, this almost looks toy grade. With a little bit of customization, you can certainly elevate it. But first impressions, I was thinking this doesn't really look quite as scale or as real as I would have hoped for being a hard body. But that said, I'm also used to having race cars and all of my other RCs are pretty much Lexan shells that I've been used to that. So this is very different for me. I'm, I, like I said, I'm taking myself out of my comfort zone here. So trying to learn some new stuff in RC and just giving some other stuff a chance that I normally wouldn't. I bought the Marlin because I wanted the extra performance. I do like doing comp competition crawls or trail crawls, going to competition courses and playing along with the guys. So I wanted to buy one that has the better performance parts on it already. It has a single speed transmission, but the important thing to me was that it had the flat bottom for getting over obstacles. I like that a lot. It also, factoring in the pricing of this thing, you know, you got real RC four wheel drive metal beadlock tires with these somewhat expensive super soft compound tires with a tread. Here's the tread pattern on them. The front bumper is metal and the rear bumper is plastic. And then the Marlin comes with cage, the MC roll bar, which I like, and what else is there? I, as I think the, the bed is bobbed a little bit, so it's a shorter bed. Okay, being that this is the Marlin, I think it also has a little bit higher ground clearance too. It just seems like a little bit more of a performance-oriented version. In order to get the body off, you do have to take out uh, two screws. So on, I think that you have to take out a screw on either side in order to get the body off. This one stays. This one would be for if you're going to do that bed delete. So once you do that, you can take it off. There are also two clip points here. So this is the hard body, it's multiple pieces. If you did want to take the bed off, there's the hardware to do that. And the bed is kind of heavy from a balance perspective. It's actually balanced pretty well, but you can tell that the bed is heavy for how little material there is to kind of balance it out with the front cab because they've made it where it's a sunken box so you can actually use it. I do like that. And there's all the pieces that are required to make that work. On the inside, you do get a dashboard, and the windows are interesting in that they're not fully glued in. They're kind of Lexan sheets that are bolted in place. It's a weird way that they've done the windows. You don't notice it at all from the outside, and they put that little trim piece in, but they don't actually connect like you could. That's interesting. And the side mirrors are rubber and this little chrome accessory. It's got some nice details, the wipers and stuff. The hood does not open, but you do have light buckets. No lights are included. I am going to put lights in. I am also likely gonna put a seat in, maybe an interior, maybe a driver. Uh, that's where I'm, again, I'm putting myself out of my comfort zone with that stuff, because I normally don't do anything scale like that. Now, here's the chassis. Ignore this connector, because we are gonna ditch that. I'm, I don't know if I got old stock, or what, because when you look on the website, it shows that it comes with XT60, and this is clearly not an XT60. This is an old Tamai connector, so that's gonna get cut off right away and put something good on. The speed control, I believe it's called the Outcry 3. It does support 3S LiPo, but again, that was hard to find. It did not mention that in the book until like the very last page. It comes set up in nickel metal hydride mode, so if, you, uh, if you're gonna use the included battery, keep it at that, but for me, I'm always gonna run LiPo, so I'm gonna move this over now to LiPo mode. And then the top row of pins there is for bashing, boating, or crawling, according to the documentation, and no jumper on the top row of pins is crawl mode. The other thing that threw me off, as I have done a little bit of testing on this just to make sure that it worked, was I plugged in a battery uh, using an adapter and I couldn't get it powered on. And I was wondering well, what's going on because I didn't, couldn't find a power switch anywhere. But there is a little wire, you gotta trace it around and they have tucked the power button 
right up in here under the chassis rails and that's where your power switch is so it's completely hidden when you're looking when you're you know setting it up you're not really noticing it but it's right there it's a 45 turn motor with a single speed transmission it's got metal out drives metal dog bones this is plastic in the metal but I'm wondering why it's all chewed up it's just manufacturing I guess the other thing is it has rust out of the box look at look at all the rust on the bolts I'm not sure what is up with that I mentioned it's a leaf spring truck so you can see here that there's a leaf and same on the rear there's the leaf springs and you have these dampers so these are oil filled dampers I believe and there's springs inside of these and you've got the leafs so it's a whole different setup than I've ever had and they feel stiff they feel really stiff but I've also done some research on this where learning that you have to break them in so I'm gonna give them a chance I'm not gonna do any modifications to this except for give it lipo power and then we're just gonna run it on the trail I'm gonna change the connector I'm gonna give it lipo power and we'll run it on the trail and then I will start doing some other modifications and upgrades over time the front bumper is all metal and quite nice so that's an expensive piece alone would be that metal bumper you do get a winch spot if you want for installing upgrades the servo is metal case the spur gear is plastic exposed it's hard for this to come out on camera well but the chassis is black and it's all metal and this thing is quite heavy for how it looks it's heavy it's probably heavier than a lot of my other crawlers I should have clarified that the reason why this feels so heavy is because the chassis frame the frame rails are solid boxed pieces of metal this isn't the C channel it's not a lightweight uh, stamped steel it's like a full hunk of it's aluminum but uh, this is all metal here where your shocks tie in like the the quality of the materials that have been used seem pretty good but we'll see how that holds up over time it's very simplistic right it's just a ladder chassis with two axles these are the Yo i believe these are the yoda 2 axles this is also why you buy a tf2 is for this axle platform and drivetrain so we're going to try it out on the trails everything everything is metal so that's where the money comes in where you're not having plastic housing axles these are 100 percent metal outside and inside and so you're paying for that here's your steering angle i'm not sure exactly what that steering angle is it's not the same as a trx4 that's for sure but uh, that's the other thing why i bought this is because it's going to be more challenging i bought this as a challenging crawler no portals you know no super speed transmission nothing too crazy it's got it's only has a 45 turn motor it's going to make me slow down and and be more conscious about how i'm crawling plus the hard body scale factor i mentioned i bought some upgrades for it uh, in future videos i will try and install the bench seat assembly which uh, should be just a direct bolt on it's it's kind of better than a 3d print for for quality because it's injection molded it looks like and it's got a kind of a vinyl look and it just bolts into the these bolt points here and that will give you a bench seat that you can set a driver on the reason why you want a driver in a uh, crawler like this is because if you have a driver that has legs you get extra scale points also because when you look in through the front window right now you can see the chassis and everything and after i install this you would just see a seat and it would go make it, it would tie it in a little bit better with the dashboard that you get so i'm surprised for however many dollars this would be for them to add it I wish they had just added a seat and then this is a light kit this is the RC four-wheel drive ZE 0016W basic lighting kit it'll just plug into these light buckets and stuff I'll have to route the wiring but that'll be in the future ready to go um, you don't get a battery tray it, it just sits right on top of the metal and even then uh, I'm not sure that I like using a soft case I may look at getting some other options because you're just setting it on top of these wires like there's no plastic tray you're just literally setting a battery on top of this metal on top of these wires so I do like the idea of using a hard case in this chassis check out some hard case batteries from Jen's Ace or uh, possibly some shorties where they would tuck in in between the wires you change the connector we're ready to go on Dean's
All right. So yeah, being in leaf spring, it's gonna be very bouncy right until they break in. And even after they break in, it's probably still gonna be quite bouncy. The whole point is we're gonna try this out, see if I like it. Okay, first maiden run of the TF2. I'm gonna try and just crawl around all of these chairs and see how bouncy the, the solid axles and the leaf springs are around this easing on throttle. Smooth. Crawl over, let's just crawl over all the chairs. That's full lock steering. Okay, so that was my bad. Let me just come back to the very start with a bit more steering because steering was currently, it came at like 10% out of the box. I want 100%. It's still weak, it's still very weak. Oh, that's left and right. Hold on, left, right EPA. We're going full throw either way now. Much better. Check your steering endpoints. I forgot to check. All right. I think it gets caught up on the body when you turn the steering. Anyway, let's go. Steering endpoints set. First crawl. This is around 10% throttle. Bit more steering. Way more. Oh my goodness. Way more steering. I missed. Hard to see. Sun is setting. It's not as bouncy as I thought. This is about 20% throttle. Gonna try and give it a bit more. 30% throttle <laughs> and crash. Scratching my bumper. Giving it authentic trail. Yes. It just feels weighty to me. The ram to get the rammy back and forth. I know. So it does have a full brake on all the time when you let off. You know what? That's a lot more planted than I thought it would be. I gotta say, I think it handles better than I expected, and I think it's just because so much weight is down low. I think at the very, very limit of the low speed control, it's not quite as good as a TRX4, but it's 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 good. Yeah. What? I feel like it needs better servo like yeah it's upgrades low and it's weak but i think that would make yeah it needs more difference. steering authority yeah it needs a stronger servo which i do have i like the steering angle i think that the steering yeah i might just good. put my i have a 35 kilogram ds servo that i haven't ever used i was going to use it in a creighton i think it's i might put it definitely fully locked I might like, put that's it in this. good look, look at that nice tire flex you just push the chair this. good look, look at that nice Tire flex. You just yeah. push the chair. He was sliding across the ground. Let's see if I can move the table. <laughs> no. We'll That's say it looks really good on video. That might be why it's in the net cruiser fleet. It definitely is why it's in the net cruiser fleet. The tires are flexing. They're breaking in already. Yeah, you have to break in the leaf springs. That's why I'm doing this test. We're gonna do this around the deck for a little bit, just kind of bounce it around the chairs. Before, look at the backyard crawl spot we got here. This also leads into a forest, an area we've never been. The sun is setting, we might crawl a little bit tonight, probably tomorrow, definitely tomorrow. Fun. First run, TF2. 